1802 alongside the Hudson River, and the tradition of the long gray line had a small beginning, five officers, ten cadets comprising a corps of engineers. Through its 177 years, many of this country's leaders and military heroes have walked these grounds, learning to be soldiers. The authorized strength of the Corps now, over 4,400, and women will be among the graduates for the first time next spring. The athletic history, especially football, is so rich at West Point. Here are some of the men who have contributed to that history. Dwight D. Eisenhower, lettered 1912. And Douglas MacArthur didn't play, but he was the team manager. And Dennis Mikey, the first coach and team captain on the Army Stadium, bears his name. Chris Cagle, All-American, National Hall of Fame, 1954. And Earl Red Blake, who coached Army to 121 victories. Felix Doc Blanchard, the great Mr. Inside Heisman winner. And his running mate, Mr. Outside, Glenn Davis, also a Heisman winner. 1944 All-American in the great Barney Poole. The other end on that national championship team, Hank Bolberg. In 1946, quarterback Arnold Tucker. Arnie Galeppa, quarterback to perfect season in 49. Bob Anderson, a two-time All-American running back. Army's unbeaten team also had this man, Pete Dawkins, a Heisman winner. And Bill Carpenter was the famed lonesome man in 1958, 9, and 60. General George C. Marshall once said, when looking for an officer for a secret and dangerous mission, give me a West Point football player. The purpose, history, legacy, tradition, just as rich as the U.S. Naval Academy in Annapolis, Maryland. Slightly younger, 134 years. The mission direct enough to prepare midshipmen morally, mentally, and physically to be professional officers in the Naval Service. The brigade of midshipmen now numbers more than 4,400 and will also have women in the 1980 graduating class. The Naval Academy located at the confluence of the Severn River and Chesapeake Bay, the grounds marked by one of the world's largest dormitories under one roof, Bancroft Hall. The entire brigade lived there. The football history deep at Navy, reflecting names deep in American history. Names like William F. Bull Halsey, he was a fullback and a tough one. Jonas Ingram, 1906 fullback, came back as director of athletics later. And Tom Hamilton, All-American, twice served as football coach. Slade Cutter, his field goal beat Army, 3-0, 1934. Mansfield Turner, guard, road scholar, now heads the CIA. And Bo Coppage, retired captain, 1940s tackle, athletic director there since 68. The great running back, Dick Duden of the 40s. And Reeves Basinger, who almost beat Army in a marvelous comeback in 46. And the center, Dick Scott, an All-American twice in 45 and 47. And Ron Beagle, the great end, had 64 career pass receptions. George Welch, now the Navy coach, quarterback back to Mitty Trigger Bowl win in 55, and Big Bob Reesnyder, the great All-American tackle of 57, and Danson Joe Bolino, who won both the Heisman and Maxwell trophies. Another winner of those two trophies, quarterback largest callback. And you know what he's doing these days. There have been many others, Whitmire, Eisenhower, Gattuso, Busick, Whitworth. Great people, great names, great Americans, and all the factors that make up history and tradition at hand today. All the signs are here, the enthusiasm and fervor just seems to go on year after year as we come to you from John F. Kennedy Stadium in Philadelphia. The weather is clear and cool, 42 degrees, and here are the midshipmen. The Mitty's record all the year. They won the first six ball games, but then they lost four in a row to Pitt, Notre Dame, Syracuse, and Georgia Tech. George Welch is their coach. And now, the Black Knights of the Hudson, the Army Cadets. Been a lean year for Lou Saban, his first at Army. Won the first two. The second game of the season was a big win for them. Then the trouble started. Injuries really cut into him. It's been a less than satisfactory year at 2-7-1. But this game is a season maker. I'm Keith Jackson along with Era Parsi. Era, we've had in the past young men just suddenly emerge 
and become stars in this ball game. Reeves Basinger, a name that comes out of the past who almost won a big ball game. Today, there's a young man named Bradley T. Decker from Weather, Westerville, Ohio, who has not only never played in a varsity football game, he has never taken a snap in a varsity football game. He's probably scared to death, but he is the starting quarterback for Army. That he is, and the combination of circumstances has contributed to that. The Army team has been decimated with injuries. And of course, with injuries uh, goes losses, and with losses goes rumbles. And there's been some rumbles out of West Point where Luce Saban, their football coaches, uh, threatened to quit and so forth and so on. And of course, we talked to both Luce Saban and Major General Ray Murphy, the athletic director, and I think it's a combination of things. I think Ray Mur I mean, I should say Lou Saban, like myself as a former football coach, wants things to happen right now or yesterday. And Ray Murphy, of course, knows that it, it, it takes a while, it takes a little time. I think both of them are working together uh, to bring back Army to the prominence. But the problem they have this afternoon is reflected in the starting backfield, where Bobby Crumpton will start there, a freshman, has carried the ball two times and made two yards. At right halfback, 5'7", 145 pounds, Larry Pruitt, who's caught eight passes, and, of course, at quarterback, Decker. But there's a reason Decker is there, because he's an option quarterback, and the one thing that Syracuse was able to do to the Navy team, as good as they are defensively, was to be able to option them. That's why he's there. Okay. Depth, obviously, as you say, the problem at Army. Apparently, the same problem at Navy, because they won the first six and have lost their last four. Exactly right. They've lost the last four games, but two of those are bowl teams. They have had difficulty and injuries at the skilled positions. Sherlock, their running back. Callahan, their running back. Of course, they went in there with Eddie Myers, who grabbed 180 yards last week against Georgia Tech. He's done a great job at the running back position. But what Welsh told me yesterday is that they had to use two tight ends while these people were injured. And people have ganged up on them with eight-man fronts and they've not been able to score. They now have Callahan back and Dent back, and they're going to make twins today, this afternoon. They'll use some tight ends, but they're going to put two flankers out to one side to try to stretch the defense. They're still going to run Myers 35 times from that eye position, but they should be able to pass better and reduce the uh, contain of the defense. Okay. We're about ready for the 80th meeting between Army and Navy. And there's going to be a crowd of some 70,000 ready for the ball game this afternoon. And this great classic, an ABC Sports exclusive brought to you by Chevrolet and your participating Chevy dealers who invite you to come take a special test drive during Chevy's National Economy Drive. And by Texaco, with over 66,000 employees doing their best at their jobs to keep your trust. The midshipmen of Navy will be wearing the white shirts. Army will be wearing the black shirts and Army will receive. The ball is in the air. The game is underway. Walker, Gerald Walker has it. And Army will go to work on natural turf from about the 17-yard line with T.D. Decker, his first varsity snap ever coming up. Bobby Crumpton, mentioned by Arrow, who's carried only twice. Bobby Vici, who has not played all that much either. And the smallest man, I think, on the field, Larry Pruitt. Mike Ponestock is the split in from Sellens Grove, PA. So here is a big moment in the life of T.D. Decker. You're looking at a cockeyed eye formation. Ball is handed off to Vici, the fullback. Hits it over the right side and gets the ball out to about the 30-yard line. Just short of the 30. So make it a pickup of three behind Bill Wilhelm. Tackled. Tom Henry at guard, 210. Ed Perkins, the center from Claiborne, Texas, at 230. These fellows are not all that big. 239 pounds for Boucher. Sharman at 220. And the tight end, McKeon, at 215 pounds. Second down and seven. The ball is again handed off to Vici, number 32. And he hits it out across the 30 to about the 33-yard line. You'll note that cockeyed eye that they have in there, which uh, Saban said he put that eye back position in a deeper spot so that he could gain some speed at the corner. There's the Navy defensive front and the defensive secondary in linebackers. And so Army now looking at a third down and four. The ball is at the 33-yard line of Army. The lights are on here as we begin. The 80th meeting between Army and Navy. 
going for the first down and being held short of it at the 35-yard line. They had to get it up to the 37. It was Vici on his third successive carry. And so the cadets of Army will be looking to kick the ball away. And going deep for Navy will be number 31, John Ross, a sophomore out of Phoenix, Arizona. Rotomer's kick is in the air. It's a good high-hanging kick, forcing Ross to call a fair catch for Navy back at the 31-yard line. The Navy offensive unit after a 34-yard punt on the field with Bob Powers at quarterback. He's from Beaver, PA. Ed Myers, the young sophomore, who will be busy today. Larry Klawinski, good solid blocker. Steve Callahan, who is coming off injury. Kurt Gaynor is a fine football player. Carl Hendershot is the tight end, and you'll see Gaynor working both in tight and split in position. From the 32-yard line of Navy, their first possession. Trying to break a four-game losing string. Powers turns and gives to Lewinsky. A big hole, and Larry goes to the 42-yard line. The offensive front for the middies, and they opened a big hole over the left side for Klewinski. That's John Taylor at 256. McAllister at 252. They're bigger than Army. Bott at 245. Feldman at 249. And Welch at 253. They can haul bigger fellows, I guess, on ships than they can in tanks or trucks or whatever, but Navy is so much bigger <laughs> than that Army. The defensive unit, Mays has just come back for Army to play that nose guard position. He's been hurt some of the year. There are your linebackers for the cadets and the defensive secondary. And that is just short of the first down by a foot. They line up in the I formation. And Powers wants to go big with it. Gets it to the sideline. The pass is complete to Callahan. And that certainly is good for the first down. As the ball reaches the Army 46, a 13-yard pickup. Take another look here. You see Callahan coming down. The thing that I talked about, now they have two split receivers. Powers can throw the football. He's got a strong arm. He's been a little inconsistent. He just turns a little square out here. He's wide open. Uh, pretty good fake to the inside. So the middy are on the move, just short of the Army 46. Powers turns to the tailback Myers. Myers to the 45, and then he is shoved back. And number 72, Stan March, a junior out of Houston, Texas, met him eyeball to eyeball and rolled him back. And that's, it's remarkable. Now, they've played so many times. And look, if Navy should win today, the whole thing is even. It's, it really is incredible. <laughs> There's an idea of just how much Army has outweighed along the offensive and defensive front today. See the Navy, quite large at 251, but just not that deep. From the 45, on second down and eight, Myers to the outside. And he ran right out of a tackle, and looks like he's got a first down for the middies as he gets the football inside the 35. Well, Myers got his opportunity to play when Sherlock and Callahan were injured, and he stepped in there, and he's had a super year. He's not a little guy. I looked at him down on the field yesterday. He's 5'9", but he's about 205. He's a wrestler, and he's a strong. They're going to run about 4'5 in the 40, too. From the 34-yard line of Army, first down, Navy. Little dance at the line of scrimmage. Found some daylight on the right side. Moving in behind Welch and Feldman. And George Mays, number 55, was there to get a piece of him. George is a senior out of Orange, New Jersey. The football is marked at just short of the 29-yard line. And Keith, George Mays is just back after an injury. And I'll tell you, it's a real plus for the Army team. He's their captain, 6'4", 255, and he's their best football player. Second down at about five for the middies inside the 30 of Army. Ball goes to Klewinski, the pullback. And Klewinski from Bay City, Michigan gets it down to about the 27-yard line. Bill Fleming is with us here in Philadelphia today, and he has some news for you. 
Right, Keith, in that big ball game between Alabama and Auburn, with two minutes to go in the third quarter, Alan McElroy has booted a 22-yard field goal for the Crimson Tide. So now they have increased their lead 17 to 6 over Auburn and take one more big step toward the Sugar Bowl. We'll keep you up to date on that. Thank you, Bill. Bill also has some special features for you at halftime that you're going to enjoy, I'm sure. The ball is at the 27-yard line, third down and a long two. That's Callahan in motion for Navy. And Powers, the quarterback, spins and rolls over the top of one of his teammates and uh, would-be tackler for Army and just comes plumping down right along where the marker is put. So it's going to be close to a first down. They'll bring the changes. A little something new for Navy. They had not been running the option with Powers. And uh, Coach Wells said yesterday that they're going to run a little option in here. They feel that they, he can execute. He's a big, strong youngster. It's his last year. He's a senior. But he feels that uh, they need to open up their attack and run all kinds of variety. And, of course, we've seen that in this opening drive. Well, that measurement reflecting uh, the closeness on the effort by Powers. The moon is up. The sky is clear. It's been a very pretty day. They were expecting some snow flurries over the western part of the state. And it looks like the people in the Penn State pit game sort of dodged the weather bullet over there. But we've had very pleasant weather here in Philadelphia. And over the years, I can say that's uh, very fortunate. Fourth down, they will go. They need about six inches. It's Meyer. He's got it. Good surge by the right side of the Navy line. They got over there and just outnumbered the Army defenders on that side and were able to get it. Army came to a goal line defense. And it was a good call on the part of the Navy quarterback powers because they had them all bunched up inside. He got leverage at the turn and they made the first down. Army particularly inept over the last uh, four ball games in their offense. That really hurt their offensive total. But they did have a big one over the Stanford Cardinals early in the season. First down from the 22 of Army. Fullback Klowinski. Klowinski up the middle. He's got about five yards on the carry as March, Mays, and Trumbori get a hold of him. Now, one of the interesting things that's happened in this drive is Larry Klowinski has carried the ball twice already. In all season, he only carried it 52. He only averages five times a game. But you can see the power of the big time, I think, Navy line muscling out the smaller defensive guys, although George Mays is back. And uh, he has missed several games, but he's back, and I suppose he'll have to get tuned up again. Give Klewinski seven yards on the last carry. Second down, three, just short of the 15. Navy's very first possession, and they're on the move as Myers is held up at the 14-yard line. The cadets roll him back with 9-10 to go. John Garrison, inside linebacker, a sophomore out of Hales Corner, Wisconsin, a 200-pounder. Popped him. And here's Bill again. And an update on the Auburn Alabama score. Charlie Trotman has just passed 36 yards to Joe Cribbs with eight seconds to go in that third quarter. And now it is 17 to 12 as the two point conversion pass failed. Mm, a hot one, huh? Battle in Birmingham. Mm. Third down and two. Powers on a roll, getting some heat. They've got it. That's a nice play, but number 94, Larry Trumbore, senior from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, ran him down. And so the cadets have bowed their neck down here. Great job by Trumbone. He contained him. Powers tried to get outside with both lead blockers, Klawinski and Myers. Trumbone kept his feet, kept fighting to the outside. You'll see him here, number 94. Look at him fight him off. And finally gets a hold of Powers and gets enough of him to make him fall. At the 16-yard line, fourth down for the Navy. And they will go to the field goal. And doing the kicking will be Steve Fear. This is a, no, it is not. It is Dave Gwynn. Dave Gwynn doing the kicking. And it's no good. Just missed it. So Gwynn gets the call to try the field goal, and he missed it. And Army gets away as the Old Navy has only scored six points in the first quarter this year. You're going to see a lot of that kind of information about this team. But the most important thing right now is this Army team stopped Navy inside its 20. Navy missed a field goal. Army's got the ball, and here's T.D. Decker with his first carry of the ball game, his first varsity carry ever, and he puts his head down for two yards. 
Well, they're trying to run the option with him, feeling that he is the best option quarterback they have. Gerald Bennett, number 16, who has played quite a bit, is a pretty good passer, and in the event that uh, Decker can't move him, I'm sure that he'll go with Bennett and put it up in the air. Second down and eight coming. And one bank of lights. Straight across at midfield has uh, expired on us. It's going to be a little dark in the middle of the field here as the day leaves us. Second down and eight. And Decker looks like he wants to throw it. Slips and his knee goes down back at the 17-yard line. This is not the best field in the country. They, well, they patch were, it up and make it as playable as possible. Well, Keith, what they did, they had a big horse show here nine weeks ago, and they completely resodded it. I went down and checked it yesterday, and I'm not so sure that it is totally seated, although it looks nice, felt good when I walked on it. We'll see whether or not they slip on this thing or whether they tear out chunks. Obviously, Lou Saban unsettled over that moment uh, with his new quarterback who lost his footing and touched his knee down for a loss all the way back to the 17-yard line. Loss of five. That'll make it third down and 13. And the ball is handed off to Beachy, number 32, and there's not much there for him, a yard maybe. And Terry Huxel, a junior out of Cincinnati, Ohio, makes the stop for Navy. That'll bring up a fourth down for Army, and they'll have to punt it. We'll give you an idea of what Army's problem has been. They just simply have not been able to acquire real estate inside the football playing field. And that was with Mole Rain, their top quarterback. Ah, fine kick. And a fair catch is called by John Ross back around the 45-yard line, a 37-yard punt. We have no score in the first quarter with 6.37 to play. Navy's second possession turned away the first time. They'll go to work from their 44-yard line with Bob Powers set up. Callahan goes wide to the outside along with Kurt Gaynor. So he's got those twins outside. They'll stay on the ground with Ed Myers, and he gets it outside to the sideline. And a squarely built fellow breaks it big. John Hilliard, inside linebacker, finally shoved him out of bounds. He ran for 19 yards. Well, you see, they put the double flanker to the field just on a tailback action. It's actually designed to come inside on an isolation play. Great running back by Myers. He bounces to the outside. You can see unblocked people. He shakes a tackler, but this is what a good back does. The hole was designed clear over the left guard, and he wound up running it outside for big yardage. Greg Papa John goes outside this time with Callahan. Powers on a roll on first down, going to put it up. Pass is complete to Callahan, and Callahan is knocked out of bounds down around the 20-yard line. It'll be a first down for Navy, a pickup of 16. You know, Navy looks more like they did a year ago when they had McConkey out there, the receiver. He just rolls out now by putting two flankers out there. You can see Callahan, who is back for the first time now, is contributing greatly to this offense. He just, they drive both of them off the field. Callahan breaks to the outside. You get a little turn here, uncovered. Big yard. That's pretty tough to handle, isn't it? You, you bet. Two guys coming down at you like that. Well, yeah, Powers hummed it in there pretty good, too. It's first down call at the 21-yard line. Troy Mitchell in it, flanker. Callahan is out for the moment for Navy. Ladies are on the move again. Ball goes to Myers. Hits it in the middle inside the 20 to about the 19. Case. You have not heard the news that Moraine, the Army quarterback, the reason Becker is in there, he was running out, working out the other day, and his knee just went out from under him. They've had 10 instances of knee surgery this season at Army. They really have had a lot of things happen to him. Another thing that's happened here, I know that Lou Saban told me yesterday, they had planned against a too tight end attack to use a lot of triple stack, bringing eight people up. Now they're forced out of it because of these double flankers to the field. Second down and eight from the Army 19 for Navy. Klawinski, the fullback. And he's got a yard or so as he pops into the middle there. And he's stacked up. Hilliard, the lead tackler on the play. John is number 80. 5'11", 210 from Plain City, Ohio. He steps to the inside. You see the blocker, number 77, Richard Bott, miss him. And he stops Klawinski. Ball is at the 19-yard line where it is third down. And about eight. Callahan is back in. And he comes to the field side or the wide side. Along with Dave Dent. Power. 
Lewis as the ball batted down. He was trying to get it out there to Callahan as Dent had gone downfield on a what amounted to a screen situation. Couldn't get it to him. You know, the one thing about the Army team, they have played a pretty doggone tough schedule. And uh, you get some seasoning. Even though you're losing some ball games, you get some experience and you're going against tough competition. It makes you a little tougher ball club, and they've done very well in this first series. Another first field goal series. try. This time it is Steve Fair who comes out. Glenn missed on his second try of this year. A moment ago, this time Fair hits it. And he's got it. And that matches his longest field goal effort of the year, 36 yards. Navy takes the lead, 3-0 at 5.02 to go, first quarter. Like it or not, winter is here. And right now, to help you get through the messy weather ahead. Charlie Trotman, the quarterback of Auburn, is driving the Crimson Tide crazy. He has just passed 54 yards to set up a touchdown and another 11 yards to score the touchdown. Auburn ahead of Alabama, 18 to 17. Incidentally, the reason we cannot show you that game today is because Auburn is on NCAA probation and cannot appear on any aspect of any NCAA collegiate telecast. But we'll keep you up to date on the score. Keep all right, Bill, it's a poor kickoff for Navy. The ball is fielded short and returned back up the field. It's going to be about the 30-yard line for Army as Ernie Jones, number 31, a reserve fullback, picked it up. Incidentally, about that Alabama situation, if Auburn should beat Alabama, then that's going to put the Georgia Bulldogs in the Sugar Bowl, and the Alabama Crimson Tide, I believe, would go to the Fiesta Bowl. And the people out in uh, Tempe would uh, be dancing in the streets if that happened, I'm sure. And 11 minutes, a little over 11 minutes to play in the ball game in Birmingham. All right, here's Army trailing three to nothing as Decker rolls out, looks downfield, pumps it up in the air, and the pass is intercepted. He threw it in the crowd, and it's picked off by Mike Punzer of Navy, and the middies are in good field position at the Army 35. That's his third interception. Mike Punzer, the number one tackler on the Navy team with 133 involvements, drops right back and takes the ball away, and I can assure you that Decker will not be encouraged by that from a confidence standpoint. Here's an isolation on You see the rollout brings him to the side. He reacts beautifully right here, comes right back and takes the ball away. Hey, he's a good football player, I'll tell you. Watch him. Larry Pruitt was out there, the intended receiver, and he's that 5'7", 145 pounder you were talking about. And he was outsized considerably by Kronzer there. All right, maybe to the attack from the 35. Ed Myers with the ball, go to the outside. And he's got about three yards. Good pursuit by the Army team. It looked like they're going to turn the corner there, but the Army flowed right with it. Myers has carried eight times now for 45 yards in the ball game, and there's Mr. Kronzer who intercepted the ball for the Navy. The Oakland Raiders and the New Orleans Saints on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football presentation out of the Superdome in New Orleans. New Orleans Saints trying to win. NFC Western Division. They're sitting on top right now. Second down. Seven. Powers goes deep down the middle, and it is incomplete. Callahan was out there, had his man turned around, and Chris Zowie fell down, a freshman out of Parma, Ohio, and Chris, I'm sure, gets up and thanking his lucky stars that uh, that pass was not thrown right. You see number 55, George Mays, the biggest man on this Army team, comes flowing through, shakes the blocker. Let's see what he does to the quarterback. Oh, Powers knows he's around. Oh, yeah. Well, he just picked up that 77 and threw him out of the way, didn't he? <laughs> That's right, Richard Bach. Third down and seven. Meyer. Outside, first down. getting a big block from Frank McAllister, a junior out of Pittsburgh, got around the corner and turns it for the first down at the 20. You see, fake to the inside and then come back to the backside. He drew the linebackers in. You can see they have leverage on all the players except number 18, who is Dave Charis, one of the better players in the secondary for the Army team. Gain of 12, nine carries, 57 yards for Myers now. He had 180 the last time out. Got it again. It's hard to read 
really put on the ground. Jeff Cook got to him first, slowed him up, and then got some help. The real there's George Welch, the Navy coach, and here's Bill Fleming of ABC. And Alabama has just scored now with nine minutes to go in the ball game. Stedman Sheely on an eight-yard run. They're back on top, 25-18 in the fourth quarter. Oh, what a game. Oh, that's always a good one, though. My Ooh. goodness. <laughs> Legion Field in Birmingham. Well, so much it's riding on it. That's, that's right. Just inside the 15, second down and four for Navy. Eddie's leading 3-0 and looking for some more. Power still got it. Puts it in the air. The pass is incomplete. Threw it over Callahan's head. Well, that's the thing that Powers has done during the year. He's had open receivers. His percentage is 42%. He's got a strong arm, but he has a tendency, of course, to overthrow and has been erratic, of course, during the year. But he's got a strong arm. Alabama 25, Auburn. Now the moon is becoming very obvious coming up over the city of Philadelphia. This darkness is settling. Numbers on power so far in the ball game tonight. Ball is just inside the Army 15. Third down for Navy. They need four. Meyer. He's short of his four. He gets to about the 12. That'll bring up fourth down. May bring in the field goal unit. It'll be fourth and about two. Every time that... Uh, Navy has shown the two tight ends. Army comes to an eight-man front. They've, the Navy team, as they had in previous games, has difficulty in maintaining possession of it. No kicker coming in. This time, George Welch decides he'll go. Try to get the TD. Fourth down and two. Well, I'm betting on Myers to the outside. And it pitch sweep. trouble gets it off pass is caught and it's touchdown Troy Mitchell so for a moment it appeared it would be a loss but Powers stayed with it and got his touchdown as Mitchell took it in well there you are a guy like Powers that just overthrew an open receiver in Callahan comes scrambling to his left, throws the ball in the most awkward position that you can for a right-hander, hits him right, great catch by Mitchell, and the touchdown. Steve Fear is in for the extra point try. It is up, and it's good. Two minutes and 48 seconds to play in the first quarter. And the midshipman of Navy has jumped out to a 10 to nothing lead over the cadets of Army. Now look what I found touchdown has put Navy out to a 10 nothing lead. Those are the numbers on the first touchdown of the ball game. And Navy now is ready to kick off to Army. And the deep man for Army will be Gerald Walker. He's number 40, a freshman from Greenville, South Carolina. Dave Gwynn will kick off for Navy. He's a junior from Belton, Missouri. And it's a terrible kick. Going to the sidelines, caught way up field and out of bounds. Up around the 37. Let's go back to the touchdown. There you find Powers rolling left, which is the most difficult position to throw from. And, of course, Troy Mitchell keeps moving out to this side. He throws the ball. He takes it away again from Dave Charest again. I didn't realize that. And of course, he goes into the end zone. But here's another view of it. He comes down the field, turns. But he slips and falls, goes to his knees, gets back <laughs> up, and makes the catch. And Navy's right back uh, in their defensive alignment. Same setup they had had before, but this time, Bradley T. Decker from Westerville, Ohio, finds a little bit of running room going to the outside of the open side of the field and picks up about four yards. Mike Kronzer from El Cajon, California, brought him down. Well, it's got to be a lot of tension in, for Decker uh, coming into a big ball game like this. You wonder whether or not how much confidence the team has in him. Actually, those initials are for TD, so they must think that he can score it. Double wide to the right side on second down and six from the 42. The ball is handed off to Beecher, the fullback, and he's out to about the 44 before Charlie Thornton, senior out of Compton, California, and he's one of those good football players that a lot of people wanted to come play for him out west. Here's Bill again. 
In the fourth quarter, A&M is leading Texas 13 to 7. Now, if Texas loses that game, since Houston is overwhelming Rice, that means that Houston would go to the Cotton Bowl, and of course, Arkansas then would go to the Sugar Bowl. Texas goes to the Sun Bowl. There it is, Houston 42 to nothing over Rice. So all the Cougars are doing is waiting. Okay, Bill, third down and a long three for Army for the first down. Outside pitch. Not going to get the first down, are they? Just overwhelmed. Bobby Crumpton, a freshman, 170 pounder from Reston, Virginia, brought down by Chuck Zingler out of Medford Lakes, New Jersey. And Army will have to punt. I, I don't, I, you know, you don't want to forget that Navy led the nation in defense in the early going until they lost some of their top personnel. They still are missing some people. Greg Milo is still out uh, from an injury, and he was their rover back. They're a fine defensive team. Charlie Adams in the punt. Gets his kick off. This time he doesn't get all of it. Shanks it out of bounds. Short of the Navy 40. They'll mark it up around the 45-yard line. 17 yards on the punt. Next Saturday, you ought to take a moment to read this. Delaware and Youngtown State will go for the Division II championships. Division I AA semifinals will have Lehigh and Murray State in the other game to be announced. Delaware and Youngstown today both scored a ton of points. <laughs> I think it was 62 and 52 or something. 60s and 50s, that tells you they're a pretty good ball club. At the 44 of Navy, first down for the midshipmen. They're leading 10 to nothing with 49 seconds to go in the first quarter. Myers again. Well, he's on 180 plus pace, isn't he? All the way to the 40 yard line and he's running in behind uh, Big Tom Feldman. <laughs> he can really accelerate, four five in the 40. You can see they blocked Mays, they doubled up on him. And of course, Myers was through there before he could bat your eye. He really can go. There you look at Mays, who's a good football player, gets posted by the center and driven by the left guard, who is Frank McAllister, and he's out of the picture. And it's first down at the Army 40. 81 yards now for Myers in the ball game, and he's got it again. Oh, the ball came loose, and Army's got it. So Navy makes a mistake. Myers, I don't think, ever really had a handle on it. And he got into the stack, and somebody whacked it loose. See Myers, 40 now, get the ball. Well, he's put it away all right, hasn't he? He's got the ball. May stripped it, didn't he? Can't tell who that is. Might have been George May. Whatever, Army's got the ball. At their own 37-yard line, first down. Decker sets him up. He's got Crumpton and Beachy behind him. And the little guy is out to about the 40-yard line on the carry. It was 75. Streets who called, caused the uh, Kevin Streets, a junior. Poor Army that knocked that ball loose. Well, the first quarter's over. Navy leads Army 10 to nothing. Army has the ball second down as we go to the second quarter of play. Army's ball, second down, and seven. The ball is on their own 40. And Decker is the quarterback. They've got double wide this time. Navy short the five-man front. Decker turns, gives the ball to Beachy. Beachy trying to get to the outside. Gets it up to the 45-yard line. That'll leave him two yards short of his first down. And Charlie Thornton, number 84, makes the tackle. He's the leading sacker on the Navy team, number 84. He's number three tackler. Let's see what he does here. Steps inside, fights off the guard who was pulled, and of course finally gets a hold of number 32, Bobby Vichy, and knocks him down. Not Gene Skinner, a sophomore from Alexandria, Virginia, has gone in now as a wide receiver. Team on third down and two. They have yet to make the first down. Outside, outside. Well, I believe they got one there. That's the first, first one in the ball game. Yep, first first down. There's the 
fourth quarter score down in Birmingham with three minutes to play. Alabama leading Auburn 25 to 18. Bama wins it. They go on into the Sugar Bowl. A&M is still leading Texas. Houston kicking rice sideways in the third quarter. Pittsburgh today, a game you saw earlier on many of these ABC stations, beating Penn State. Boston College edging Holy Cross in their season finale. First down for the Army. The ball at the 48-yard line. Decker. He gets buried by number 76. That's certainly not much of a match. John Merrill, a big 255-pound, six-foot-six-inch senior from Fort Charlotte, Florida. And there are the numbers after quarter number one. We certainly see the dominance of the Navy team in that first period. No first downs for Army. Look at the yardage, 12 to 143, and there's also 10 points on the board. Second down, though the man on the markers across the way has not changed it. Decker puts it up and it's batted down. Looks like number 55 reached up and swatted it away. That'd be Tom Falk, linebacker out of Sarasota, Florida. Other scores, Tennessee. Finishing strong this year, a 31 to 10 win over Vanderbilt. The Volunteers are off to the Blue Bonnet Bowl. Ithaca beating Wittenberg today. They'll be in the playoffs. There's a score we told you. Delaware, 60 to 10 over Mississippi College. And Youngstown State, 52 zip over Alabama AM. and Youngstown <laughs> State's a pretty popular thing around here because that's where Ron Jaworski came from. Quarterback of the Eagles. Third down and about 10. Decker loops it up. They set up a screen and Thornton messes it up. Brings down the ball carrier right at midfield. Bobby Crumpton had it. Before Bobby could get it turned up field and going, Charlie Thornton had a hold of him. Let's take a look at number 84, Thornton again. This is a screen pass is what it is. Comes in here. Let's see what happens. Now he sees the rollout and the pass. Look at him come clear back on this screen and make the play. Oh, that's a super play by Charlie Thornton from Compton, California. Charlie Adams to punt for the Army. And he shanks another one out of bounds, but there's a penalty flag thrown along the line of scrimmage. So let's see what the call is. It might be a little elbow flying there. No, procedure. It's against Army. I would think the Navy might very well decline it because Adams just shanked that ball out of bounds. He didn't get hardly anything out of it. Now, this is really uh, interesting because Adams has been averaging almost 40 yards for every kick. 39.8. I wonder if he had the option there. Because no, he, he didn't because apparently they uh, the blew the I whistle. I heard the whistles, yeah, and the play was not in effect the, because the whistles had killed him. So, in, in a sense, it's a break for Army. They accept the five yard penalty, but it gives Adams another opportunity. And a little heat that time, but uh, sure didn't get a whole lot better kick away, didn't he? Sure it is. John Ross way back around the eight yard line. Good tackle. Good open field tackle brings him down. Up at the 17, it was Drew Harrington that made the tackle. Billy's having some grass and we'll take a timeout. Copier companies have been introduced. That they have had meager success so far. But they had a bit of a break on that five yard penalty. And Adams got off a terrific punt. And uh, you can see the Navy has been much more productive. After the 46-yard punt, the ball is back at the 16-yard line of Navy. First down for the Middies. They lead 10-0, 12.08 to go in the first half. It's Myers. About a yard. Well, those, those Army youngsters are giving away just about everything you could think of up in that... French area era, but they're once in a while really jump on you, don't they? Tell you what they are, they're quick and they pursue well, but they also are have left themselves uh, vulnerable, I think, to the to the reverses or any kind of misdirection because once that ball shows action, they really flow with it, and the contained man has been pursuing the line rather than containing the deepest man. Second down and nine from the 17. He's upended out across the 20 at the 22, and the man that took the legs from under him was number 55, George Mays. Uh, he's made the last two tackles. He's looks like he's finding himself again. He hasn't played for quite a while. 
Okay, here's here, here you see number 55, the captain of this ball club, flows all the way over and makes the play. He's been injured, had a broken foot, I guess a hairline break in his foot, but is now well. Callahan comes wide to the right side, the open side of the field. The ball is right about the 21. And it's third down and five for Navy. Powers, under pressure, throws, gets his man. The fullback, Lewinsky, out of the backfield, has a first down for Navy up around the 33-yard line. The pressure was coming from Stan March, a big junior out of Houston, Texas, but Stan could not quite get to him. And there was also some heat from Larry Trumbore, number 94. Now, watch Trumbore here. 6-3-2-12, he's putting the pressure on. Powers reacted very well under this heat. Of course, he's finally blocked down here, Trombone is. Trombore. Trombore, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Trombone. <laughs> That's an instrument, isn't it? <laughs> At the 34-yard line, first down. It's Meyer. Good play, 35. Well, they finished the game down in Birmingham, Bill, and what happened? And the Crimson Tide fans are going wild because Alabama has defeated Auburn 25 to 18 in what must have been a great ball game today. And so it's Alabama ranked number one on to the Sugar Bowl, and we still don't know who their opponent's going to be, but we will know in another half an hour or so. It'll either be Arkansas or Texas. That's correct. One or the other. Thank you, sir. All right, the ball is at the 35, second down, nine. How many times has he carried that ball now? 17 carries for Myers, 103 yards already, and we've got nine and a half minutes to play in the first half. i tell you that, uh, Chris Zowie saved the touchdown there. It's number 28, the safety man, just a freshman from Farmer, Ohio. Had he not uh, tripped up Myers, he was gone. Myers, big sophomore from Pemberton, New Jersey. Mike Sherlock, of course, was hurt and not able to play. He's had hamstring trouble. Lewinsky, the fullback. And he's got a first down as he lunges all the way to the 42, maybe the 41. Zowie again on the tackle. Well, they picked that pitch sweep, and uh, the entire Army team flowed with it, and they slipped the ball to... Lewinsky and there was a lot of daylight on the backside and he picked up a lot of yardage. Both academies will be graduating ladies this coming spring, the class of 80. Those are midshipmen and cadets. And we will be talking to two young women who represent the female segment of the respective academies at halftime. Kevin Street's involved again. George Mays in the middle. Here's Mays. Take a look at George again. You see Richard Bott sliding across. McAllister trying to block him, and you see Mays come off of it and get in on the play there. He's got the bulk of the tackle there. Streets is a pretty good-sized fellow from Glen Burnie, Missouri, 6'3", 240. Ball is down at the Army 40-yard line, second down, and about eight. his pass off and it is incomplete the pass was intended for Callahan got a little heat from John Garrison the inside linebacker of Army actually this is man-to-man -man coverage that was used against the Navy team you see Callahan on a just a turnout here could have caught the ball yeah, the ball was right there caught the it? ball there's Garrison, the number two tackler on the Army team, blitzing. They were in man-to-man. -man. Let's see how close he gets to Powers. Gets to him just after the throw. Blitz again. Third and long. Powers sets up. Black shirts everywhere, but he gets away from him. He gets the ball off. And that ought to be pass interference. They got a call. I think Zowie came in and committed himself too soon on it. Chris... Tried to get to the ball, ran right through the intended receiver. And my goodness, there must have been five black shirts back there chasing Powers, and he got away. Well, one of the key things is you cannot allow the quarterback outside when you're blitzing. You've got to contain him, squeeze him inside, and let those linebackers knock him down. 
There's okay, Dave now Dent. Dave Dent is the intended receiver. There's 86. You see Zowie coming in here. Powers finally escapes the rush. Let's see. Oh, my, there's no question. I think I could have made that call. <laughs> Chris went right through the intended yeah. receiver. Right. 31-yard line, first down for the Navy. Nine yards on that penalty. Eight minutes to go, first half. Five-man front for Army. Ball goes to Klawinski, the fullback. He's a tough runner. He really is, and, you know, he's only had the ball uh, for the entire year in the previous 10 games, 52 times, and I think he's had it about five times already today, hasn't he? Seven for 41. Those big guards in the middle of that line with Bott in the center, McAllister and Feldman are really doing some heavy work for those Navy running backs right now. Well, they're really a big time big league line, I think. They're, you know, they're averaging about 250, and they, uh, they have not had the injuries during the course of the year. They probably could be nine from two easily. Back in the bowl, if that's the case. This is Myers, the tailback, and he's got the first down inside the 20. Navy, of course, went to the Holiday Bowl last year, played for BYU, and won. Fine season for them. And they had high hopes and started well this year, winning their first six. But then that old bugaboo that's plagued the military academy in recent years, depth, simply number of players. First downs now, Navy with 13, Army with one. It's first down Navy at the Army 18-yard line. Powers over the middle on a post. Incomplete. My goodness. Troy Mitchell almost had a second touchdown. I don't really know why he didn't have it. Looked like it was right in his hands there. It was a perfect throw. Let's take a look at it. Powers just on the eye fake. Good protection. Mitchell, he throws the ball. We get a good shot. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm sure that Troy Mitchell's disappointed with himself. Here's another angle of it. Comes right to the inside. Beats his man, man on man. Well, right that just didn't close down on him. Well, it's a game. Those things happen. Second down, 10. Army, 18. through there again inside the 15 down to about the 13 George Mays one more tackle what <laughs> Myers turns that corner he's a load see what Walsh is talking about and see what he's going to get in there 112 yards now for Ed Myers the um, powers may have audibleized that they had a big blitz coming from the left side defensively and it would have attacked the play if they had come to the field but they went to the short side and they picked up good yardage third and five from the 13. Myers again I like it <laughs> I tell you he's, he's a good back and can you imagine he started out he was a fullback and they finally moved him over there after Sherlock and Callahan got hurt moved him over to the eye back position and he's had Let's see, coming into this ball game, he carried the ball 64 times for 373 yards, and that's almost a six-point average. Big number 62 held the door for him that time. Tom Feldman, pulling guard. The ball is at the Army 1. First and goal to go, Navy. the point by Steve Fear with 6.01 to play in the first half it is up in the smoke and the cannon is booming and it is 17 to nothing Navy you know that uh, well, here's a, another look at it there's the pitch off to Myers same successful play they have and in he goes 21 
carries 125 yards. One touchdown, and he's not even half through. Of course, he may not, they may not need him if they keep rolling up the points after a 17-0 lead with 6-0-1 to go here in the first half of play. 25-18, Alabama beat Auburn down at Birmingham. Walker and Crumpton would be the deep men for Army. And the kick by Fear is taken by Walker. Brought back 28 yards. Marked down at the 37-yard line. There are the numbers. 607. They held that ball, Era. That's a long time to sit with it. It sure is. You know, one of the things if, if uh, Navy is able to hang on to this lead, isn't it interesting that this series has not been tied up since 1923? And that's about 56 years ago. And you know how I know, don't you? Yes. <laughs> First down from 37 as a cockeyed eye. And the quarterback, Decker, keeps it. And he runs it out across the 40 to the 41, maybe the 42, before he is put down. All kinds of contraptions running around <laughs> loose in this place to, today. Here's Bill again. Well, with a minute and 35 seconds to go, Texas has the ball on its own 35. It's fourth down, and A&M is leading 13 to 7. It looks more and more like Houston will be in the Cotton Bowl and Arkansas in the Sugar. All right. Second down, six. From the 42 for Army. Not much there. Uh, he doesn't have much of a chance. Uh, the Navy's defense, the Navy and uh, both offensively and defensively is a good football team. Army without, you know, consider the fact that their quarterback is gone, their running back who had over 600 yards a year ago and was had 441 yards this year, Jimmy Hill, he's gone, and uh, they have to scramble around with a youngster like uh, T.D. Decker. Hey, that makes it tough. Jimmy Hill was a pretty good little running back, too. Oh, yes, he was. Third down, six. Decker, running for his life. Lost a yard, it'll bring up fourth down. Tom Falk, number 55, was the hunter. Yards now, Navy with 218. There are the numbers on the first halves, first, first downs in this half. Army with 27 yards. Well, I think Lou Saban, the football coach of Army, is going to have to make a decision here, being behind 17 to nothing. He's not going to be able to possession the Navy team. He may have to come in here with number 16, Gerald Bennett, because he can throw the football. He's been a little erratic, but it's the only way to play catch up. Adams' kick is away, and it's a pretty good kick. Right. It up. Ross settles under. Oh, it. And down he goes back at the 13-yard line, a 43-yard punt that time for Charlie Adams from Huntsville, Alabama. 17 to nothing, Navy leading now. That's symbolic of one of the nicknames for the Army cadets, the Black Knights of the Hudson. I think they could use it. Lance and all. First down at the 13 for Navy. They lead 17 0, 354 to go. Ball's loose. Army's got it. Chris Sowey comes up for the football. So that freshman is in on a lot of plays as Wayne Flowers. Was in at tailback, making his first carry of the night. Ball never got to him, really. Got a new backfield, the flowers and twine in there, and I don't believe the youngster had a hold of it here. Didn't appear that he ever got his handle. And bang, in there goes that freshman from Ohio to recover it for Army. A big break for the cadets. They have it first down at the Navy 16-yard line. Decker hands the ball off inside to Bobby Vici, a junior out of Cranford, New Jersey. And he's going to be getting up around the 13-yard line. Well, he picked up about uh, four there, three or four. Three. At that rate, they can make the first downs anyway. Maybe they can grind it in here. Decker 
He either didn't like what he, the situation he had, whatever. He wants to talk. Time is out. We'll be right back. There's the time remaining in the first half of play. It's second down and seven for the cadets. The ball is at the 13-yard line of Navy. As they've recovered the fumble. Opportunity to get on the board right here. They're right down there in front of the cadets. And the cadets are not making it easy. As then their enthusiasm, they are roaring. And Decker and his teammates are having a little trouble. Charlie Thornton comes in to bring Beachy down. But he does get inside the 10-yard line down to the 8. So now it's third down and two. This is a ball club that scored only twice on the ground this year. And that was in the second ball game against Stanford. Decker keeps it. Outside it goes. It is Crofton. Touchdown. <laughs> Little Larry Pruitt, 5'7", 145-pound freshman from Berwick, Pennsylvania, was really the guy that opened the door for Crofton to get in there. And so the cadets, let's go with a roar. Why not? Yep, that is a mule he's right. Fine looking mule, too. Ball is down on the 10. Dave Alcoin will go for the extra point. He's got it. And so with two minutes and 28 seconds to play in the first half, it is now 17 to 7 ball game, and here's the touchdown right here. Well, it's a perfectly executed option. Double flanker out to the right. They drove him off, and you see Decker dealing the ball off just perfectly. That's why he's in there, because he's an option-type uh, quarterback. See that little 145-pounder got out there and threw a heck of a block, That's didn't he? right. He walled him off. And Bobby Crumpton got him in there for the third touchdown that maybe our Army has scored on the ground this year. And there's the final out of Texas. The Longhorns are defeated by the Aggies, 13-7. to Here's Bill. Well, it was a thrilling finish because the Aggies had to hang on to do it. Texas threatened in the closing couple of minutes, but the Aggies held them on downs and killed the clock, and so it is Texas to the Sun Bowl. Houston will go to the Cotton Bowl, and it'll be Arkansas and Alabama in the Sugar Bowl. And we'll have that dandy for you on New Year's afternoon right here on ABC, Alabama and Arkansas. That'll be a good one. It's going to be a good football game. <laughs> So the cadets recover a Navy fumble and cash it in, and it's 17 to 7, and we've got ourselves a little different kind of a look in this ball game now. As Army kicks off, and it's fielded by Callahan, and Callahan is really cut down up around the 26-yard line. I wonder if George Welsh uh, might be second-guessing himself about putting in his second backfield. At the time of the 17 to nothing score, and of course you can see the momentum can shift in the ball game. Watch and see if Army reacts to this defensively now. Ultimately, in the 60 minutes of football, it always seems to boil down to manpower. Yeah, it does, but you can have uh, a switch of momentum like this. Myers and Klewinski are back in there behind Powers. Looking to throw it, gets it off. Got a man over there, and he dropped it. Callahan couldn't hang on. Coming up at halftime for our Fireman's Fun feature, <clears throat> a look at some of today's pregame ceremonies, along with interviews with the first women graduates from West Point and Annapolis. Also, the ABC News halftime report and an interview with the 1979 Chevrolet MVP. Second down, 10. Meyer. He slips and slides and dances and bumps and gets six. 
Well, it's interesting. They're, they're throwing on first down, running on second down. And, of course, he had Callahan wide open and just dropped the ball on the first play. It'll be third down and four from the 32. George Welch, quarterback that may be teamed to a Sugar Bowl victory over Ole Miss back in 1955. He was a smooth operator at that quarterback position. Powers keeps it. Army gets him short of the first down. Mark Lingo, a freshman out of South Daytona, Florida. Number 87 over there to get him. Awful lot of young people playing on this Army team. Because that's the way you develop depth. If you just bite the bullet one season, I guess, and go ahead and take your lumps, they, they can, can develop some depth for the future. They could change things around here. If they could block a punt, get a return on here. They got three guys back. They're this is go. Navy's first punt. Huh? They're going for a return here. Lex Moletta out of Westchester, PA, will do the punting. Three men are deep for Army. Good punt. Good kick, yeah. Ball fielded by John Hellingstad. And Navy turns in a good job of coverage. The first punt of the night for Navy, 40 yards. Next Saturday on ABC's Wide World of Sports, World Cup boxing between the Soviet Union and American teams, and the World Gymnastics Championships. That's at 5 Eastern and Pacific, 4 Central Time. Minute 19 to go in the first half. 17 to 7, Navy lead. Bonnestock comes wide to the left side for Army. Decker option. Keeps it and turns from the 22 to about the 25. Steve Chambers from La Mirada, California. A junior makes the tackle for Navy. Bradley T. Decker who has tonight played in his first varsity football game at Army. And he's done just fine. <laughs> I tell you, he's done all right in there. 5'9", 183 pounds. And that's giving him a little bit of room to stretch at 5'9". Clock is rolling along now and reaches 42 seconds as the play is tumbled out of bounds. Kronzer and Ross over there defensively for Navy. There's the time remaining in the first half of play. Lou Saban there, he's been to a lot of wars. Had success in several colleges. He's had 12 jobs in 29 years, pro level, college level, athletic director. Decker is uh, nine for 15 in this first half thus far. Third and about six. Oh, hit that hole nicely. Penalty flag is down, trailing the play as he cuts across the 30. Looks like he might be short of his first down, but let's wait on the penalty. It's going to be close. Uh oh. It's Holding. against Army. Yep. Now, this is the kind of situation with 34 seconds. They're going to move him back 15 yards. They can force a punt, get a punt return, could get a field goal out of it. A lot of time left. Not a lot, but enough time to score when you got that kind of field position. The other big scores, Texas A&M beat Texas 13 to 7. Alabama beat Auburn 25 to 18. And Pittsburgh beat Penn State 29 to 14. And all those teams accepting Auburn on their way to bowl games. Bowl situation is Alabama, Arkansas in the Sugar Bowl. Texas goes to the Sun Bowl. And Houston goes to the Cotton Bowl. The ball has moved all the way back now to the 14-yard line of Army. Third down and about 20. 22 seconds to go. And they run it up the middle. Nietzsche gets out to the 29-yard line. Found a little bit of a hole in the middle, and he got through it on time. Clock stops. 12 seconds to play in the first half. Gain of 15 yards on that. And right now, let's have a look at West Point, the U.S. Military Academy. Duty, honor, country. These are the words that motivate. Tradition, pride, education. These are the tools that shape. 
the United States Military Academy. West Point, dedicated men and women mastering the challenge of leadership, meeting the rigors of higher learning. Leadership, education, athletics, total involvement. The United States Military Academy, West Point. Navy called that timeout, stopping the clock with 12 seconds to play in the first half. To bring up fourth down, they want to see the ball one more time and try to set up something on the punt return. Loletta will be into... No, it won't be Loletta. It'll be Charlie Adams in the kick for Army. It'll be the sixth punt of the ball game for them. 17 to 7 Navy lead. Off of the block. They've got nine men up there. And they're going to send them. He gets it out of there. Coming across is John Ross. And no chance for Ross to return it. And that should do it. Nope, they stop it with three seconds to play. 40 yards, including the roll. And the officials on the exchange of the ball stopped the clock with three seconds to go in the first half. Well, yeah, let's see if Powers throws a big bomb down here or well, whether they're content to go to the locker room with a 10-point lead. Hey, we got three seconds left in this half. So I want you to tell that Navy, Navy ball is over there. I want you to tell them that we're going to get them next, next half, all right? Well, he's got Callahan and Dent as the white people. Put it up. Over the middle to Dent. He makes the catch all right, but he goes down at the Army 49-yard line, and the half is over. We'll be back with today's halftime activities after this word about an upcoming ABC program and the word from our local station. And Fireman's Fund Insurance is brought to you by an independent agent near you. One of the most impressive sights in all of football is the March On. Earlier this week, Jim Lampley talked to one of the 60 women who will be graduating from West Point. Dave on Here is the march on as the cadets came into the stadium about two hours before kickoff time. It's a moment looked forward to by the men and women of both academies. And as I mentioned, women will be in the first graduating class in the class of 80. And so we felt it was rather important to get their views on their experience. This is cadet Kathy Girard, one of 119 women who entered West Point four years ago now one of 62 who are scheduled to graduate in the first class to include women at the U.S. Military Academy in its 177-year history. Kathy, this is certainly a beautiful place to spend a four-year college experience, but in terms of the regimen that cadets are expected to go through, the beauty is considered by many to be deceiving. What motivated you to choose to come to school here at the Academy? I think I was first motivated to go into the Army because my father is an officer and I thought I might want a career as an officer. And when it came to be college time, I really kind of backed off from ROTC, but when I heard that West Point was open to women, another friend of my father's encouraged me to apply. Although apprehensive, I applied, and I'm glad I came. Did you experience a sense of resentment on the part of the men who were here? Yes, we did, but over the four years, it's gone a lot better, I'd say. When we first got here, the men, of course, did not want us here. We were invading perhaps their world. But I think they've gotten used to it, and the men and the women seem to get along pretty well now. Kathy, what do you think is the most important element of your experience here that differentiates it from the experience you would have gained from going to a regular college? I think the opportunity for leadership in working with your peers and your subordinates and your superiors, um, people above and below, people in the military and out of the military, just a whole range of people that you get to work with. Um, I don't think I would have gotten that at any other college, and it's been a really good experience for me here. Well, I think people who go to other colleges would argue with you that you're certainly exposed to a lot of different kinds of people there also, but what it seems to me that you're saying is that there's a value to military regimentation. Yes, I think so. What is it? Maybe it's self-discipline that we learn here, and also discipline to accept what other people have to say and their views, and kind of judge them on your own, you learn a great deal of self-thought, um, self-evaluation. So you think that, in a way, it's an experience that keeps you open-minded? I think so, yes. What about social life, Kathy? Does that exist here? 
Not really, except on the weekends. We have Eisenhower Hall, which is like a student union building, and they have dances there every weekend. And the companies have a lot of parties, like on the weekends. You know, they may get together. But I don't think I really miss that much of that. Did you go home and talk to your friends about what they were doing at college and, and feel some sense of being left out at all? Not really. If I did feel left out at all, then I compensated by thinking that I was probably getting more opportunities here to do other things. Kathy, to what kind of young woman would you recommend West Point? I think women that are willing to work hard, that are looking for a good opportunity and a good career, and that want a challenge. A big challenge? I'd say so. And after the Corps came the brigade of midshipmen, 4,400 strong. There are 250 women in the entire brigade, and of those, 56 are in the first graduating class. Again, earlier this week, Jim visited the campus at Annapolis to talk with one of the members of the graduating class. This is Midshipman Ensign Suzanne Grubbs, one of 55 women who will graduate from the Naval Academy in Annapolis this spring as the first group of women to complete four years at Annapolis. Suzanne, you're certainly to be congratulated on having accomplished a completion of four years here at the Naval Academy. What motivated you to come to school here? I think the opportunities afforded a graduate of the United States Naval Academy or any service academy are much more extensive than perhaps a graduate of a civilian institution. Was it difficult being among the first group of women to matriculate here? Yes. Why? Uh, for the very fact that you're in light of everything at all times, everybody was watching us, always, monitoring our performance much more closely than those of our male counterparts. Did you sense any resentment on the part of the men? Yes. Yeah. Resentment for the fact that you were here or the fact that so much attention was paid to you? Both. And do you think that that resentment has dwindled over the four-year period, that in a sense the 55 of you who are graduating have proven yourselves? Well, I think that our classmates and most of the people here at the Academy know that there, there's really no differences in, in what they can do or what we can do here at the Academy. Um, the problem is a complex one as far as resentment. There is still resentment. Suzanne, much is often made of the difference between the air of military regimentation at an Academy school and the relative freedom that a student has at another university. Within that context, do you think that students here have an opportunity to express their individuality? I think there is just as much an opportunity here to express your individuality. In different it's, ways? In different or? ways. It's, of course, it's more limited how you can do it, but the opportunity is there. And do you feel that you've had every opportunity here to express your individuality? Yes. Do you have one particular goal as a result of this experience? I hope to go into naval aviation as a pilot. And are the opportunities for you to go into naval aviation equal to the opportunities that your male classmates face? Well, right now, no, they're not. There are only five billets allowed for our 55 women. Therefore, it's more competitive to get one of those five billets. You want to fly a jet, right? Yeah. Do you think that uh, just in terms of the physical and uh, emotional and mental demands of flying a jet aircraft, a woman faces any disadvantage? No. What about combat duty? Right now, the law stands that we're not allowed to go into combat duty. How do you feel about that law? I want to go into combat. I'm here at the Naval Academy. I'm here to serve my country. Do you think that there are any demands of combat duty that you would not be as ready to meet as your male counterparts? Well, the obvious uh, inference there would be the physical strength in a field-type combat. For instance, a rifle platoon leader or something of that nature. Uh, women are weaker physically than men. Therefore, they might not be as effective in that type of a role environment. It's interesting, the young woman I spoke to earlier this week at West Point commented that she felt the American public was not yet ready for the idea of women in combat and that that was the biggest hindrance to the idea. Do you agree? Yes. Do you resent that? Yes. One thing she does not resent is the score here at halftime, 17 to 7, Navy over Army. Back with more of our halftime activities in a moment. 
1945, the United States Naval Academy has been dedicated to preparing midshipmen for careers in the Naval Service. And its tradition of military and scholarly excellence continues today. Midshipmen take a full academic program as well as a wide range of professional military subjects. Navigation and ship handling skills are put into practice aboard yard patrol craft in the Chesapeake Bay. It is this well-rounded education that midshipmen take to the fleet when they graduate from the Naval Academy. From ABC News in New York, this is the Halftime Report with Barry Serapin. We're back live at John F. Kennedy Stadium in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Just ready for the second half of play in the 80th Army-Navy game with Navy leading Army 17 to 7. And this ABC Sports exclusive being brought to you by Goodyear Tiempo, the all-season radio. It eliminates winter tire changeover. And by Xerox. Keith Jackson, Aaron Parsikian, and Bill Fleming. And we're ready to go with Army kicking off to Navy to start the second half of play. John Ross is the man they like to have return the ball. And Mike Rodmers will kick off for the Army team. Ball goes Callahan. To the outside, he's got a wall. He runs out of room up around the 47-yard line. 47-yard return on it. And Lloyd Hollister was the man that finally knocks him out. Well, Callahan missed a lot of games. You can see the value of this young man to this team. He comes up, baits him to the inside, breaks outside, gets good blocking. Let's see what he does to this sideline here. He cuts back inside, good blocks there. And finally knocked down by number 61. And it's first down for the Navy at their 47. They lead by 10, 17 to 7. Ed Myers had a big first half for Navy, and he's the tailback, and he's got the ball. And the sophomore just keeps right on pounding. He must be averaging right around seven, eight yards per carry. He's got 138 yards. Stan March, defensive tackle for Army, 240-pounder. Big George Mays called his name a lot tonight. Kevin Dotson and Bob Wood at a linebacker. John Hilliard. Out of Plain City, Ohio, John Garrison from Hales Corner, Wisconsin, and Larry Trumbore from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It is second down, and it is four, maybe. With Myers averaging 5.6 yards per carry, this time Flewinski, the fullback, gets the ball, and he hits down to about the Army 45 before George Mays and company shove him back. The secondary for the cadets of Army, Jeff Cook is a cornerback out of St. Louis, Missouri. Dave Cherist is a cornerback from Hereford, Texas. Mike Means is from Marion, Alabama. And Chris Zawi is the freshman from Parma, Ohio. Lewinsky now on eight carries, totals 41 yards of the ball game at the 46 of Army, third down and three. been just about a step slow all night defensing that particular area of the field. Keith, the thing that the uh, Army team did that time, they went into a triple stack and Navy still got outside of it. They're the offensive unit for the Navy team with the football just inside the 40-yard line where it is a first down for the middies. They lead by 10. If they stick it in the end zone on this first possession of the second half, get a little rough for our Myers gets the ball gets to the outside again he was way down in traffic seemingly buried but he just kept right on running and wound up picking up seven yards on the carry here are some scores from other major games around the country today. Alabama beating Auburn 25 to 18 goes to the Sugar Bowl against the Razorbacks of Arkansas because Texas A&M beat Texas today, which sends Texas off to the Sun Bowl to play Washington and puts Houston, the Cougars, the Bill Yeoman, 
into the Cotton Bowl. And the Cougars had a romp today, 63 zip over right. You know, Pittsburgh beat Penn State today, 29-14. Pittsburgh to the Fiesta Bowl. And Penn State to the Liberty Bowl. And Boston College beat Holy Cross. And there's a penalty flag and a whistle stops the play down below. Incidentally, they coach Tennessee, another bowl team, winding up their season successfully. The head football coach of the Houston Cougars, Bill Yeoman, was a center for the cadets of Army back in 1950 and captain of this Army ball club. Keith, you know, since we did, uh, or I did the game last week, uh, Brigham Young game against San Diego State, I've been asked how good is Brigham Young, and they won 63-14. Uh, well, they opened up with Texas A&M, the team that just beat Texas, and beat them. So yep. that tells you a little bit about Brigham Young. That's right. Penalty was against Navy, their first in the ball game. It is now second down and eight, and Powers hands the ball to the fullback, Lewinsky, and Army had read it just right because Hilliard and a couple of other linebackers were right there to put him on the ground. Looked like the line was blocking another play. Here's Hilliard, number 80, just blitzes right straight up. No one blocks him, comes untouched. And, of course, you can see Klawinski has no chance. That's the way it looked like from up here. There was no one that blocked. And, of course, there's no back that uh, can make much yardage under those conditions. And it is third down and eight now. Four Navy at the Army 38-yard line. Powers gets it in the air to the sideline. Completes the Callahan and good enough for the first down at the Army 27-yard line. Well, they're, they're trying to blitz him. They had a safety blitz on that time. He didn't come anywhere near Powers. Powers rolled clear away from it. And it's very tough to cover one-on-one. -on -one. At least the Army players are staying in behind them, giving them the short stuff and not giving them the bombs. And uh, Powers executed. The attendance, 77,052. Here in Kennedy Stadium watching in Philadelphia. First down for the Navy. Ball is given to Myers. And Myers is going again. Oh, he's having a great night. See that movie put on? Yes, sir. <laughs> 169 yards for Ed now. There it is. It looks like they're going off tackle to the right or inside to the right, and he cuts it clear back to the left. Number 53, Joe Garrison, the leading tackler, or the number two tackler on his team, is the guy that missed him. And he's filed, finally hauled down by number 80. Hilliard. John Hilliard from Plain City, Ohio. It's first down and goal to go Navy just inside the Army 10. Fire to the five. Well, I guess George Ross wasn't kidding when he told me that uh, you'd see Myers or the tailback carry the ball 35 times. He's on his way to that. The center, Rick Bott, came out of that line play there, limping. But he stays in. The uh, Myers has already had the ball 28 times. And we're early in the third period. Maybe leading it by 10 and looking for another one right here. On second down, goal to go from the five. Myers. To the corner. Oh! Touchdown. fear as Myers has scored his second touchdown. Kick through the smoke. The cannon smoke is good. And so the midshipmen of Navy stretch out to a 17-point lead. 10-21 to go in the third quarter. And Navy 24, Army 7. The smoke has filled the stadium from the Navy cannon as they cheer their teams 
touchdown, third of the game. The lead 24 to 7. Myers carried the ball six times for 47 yards. On a touchdown drive that went for 53. There's another one of those contrivances that's been rolling around the stadium. Well, that took some time to build. The kickoff goes to Walker. Ooh. And Walker comes back to about the 25. You know something? I have not given the officials for the ball game tonight as you have a look at a Mr. Myers. Bob Berth is the referee. Ronald Abdo is the umpire. Vince Presto, the linesman. Line judge is Bernie Burke. Tom Gibbons, the field judge. Arthur Bale, the back judge. Francis Nicholson on the clock. And we've got 10-15 to go in the third quarter of play. Now, let's see if Army can get it moving. They haven't moved it much. From the 24. Again, they go to what Lou Saban called his cockeyed eye. And here comes... T.D. Decker around the corner. Good for a first down to the 36-yard line. Mike Pronzer brought him down. That's the biggest gainer they've had today. It was a keeper play by Decker. He's all excited now. He got off to a good start in his second half. Their third first down. With 179 yards, you know, always look in the record book. Ed Myers has 179 to see what the record might be. Well, it is substantial. 277 yards by Sneed Schmidt against Columbia, 1935. And Decker goes the other way with it and gets around the corner for about six. Fred Reitzel brought him down. But let's see. Bart Nixon, good-looking fellow. There's big Chris Garner, number 78. Terry Huxel, the middle guard for the Navy. Steve Chambers, a Californian, and Charlie Thornton, who's out of Compton. He's a good one. Decker now, 12 carries for 33 yards in the ball game. It's second down, short four. Decker trying to pitch out, waited too long with it. He was hit. The ball got loose. Crumpton covers it. And the Army keeps it. The Navy linebackers and defenseman Tom Hawk, leading tackler. He's out of Sarasota, Florida. There's another Californian, Big Tom Conzer, or Mike Conzer, Chuck Zingler, John Ross, Chris Bublett, and Fred Reitzel, the defensive secondary. Marty Jones is now in at the fullback. The flanker is Bill Skoda for Army. And they're double wide to the open side of the field on third down and six. Decker wanted to throw, but he pulls it down, and he's run out of bounds, and I don't believe he got his first down. Chris Boblett would not let him turn up field. It's like he might be a tad short. There's the offensive unit that started. Well, they go get him the first down. By golly, he did get enough of it, didn't he? He knew where his yardstick was. The offensive front for Army. You, that youngster showed me a lot of gizzard, Era, because uh, you're right. Uh, he had to be feeling a little heat when he came out to take his first horse at a snap in this old traditional football game. That's right. The consequences of this game, he seems like he's nice and loose now and has some confidence. 46 yard line, first down Army. Decker still got it. He's got some real estate, but he throws it. He throws it in the crowd, and it's incomplete. He threw one in a crowd like that before, and it was intercepted. Honestock was the intended receiver on that one. We invite you to watch an ABC News weekend report later tonight. We're up to the minute information on the situation in Iran. For weeknights, ABC News will present a special report on the Iranian situation as long as that situation remains critical immediately following your late local news. I think we got to remember at this time that these two teams down here are our teams, United States teams. All over the country. Second down and ten. Decker gets that one and completes it. The pass caught by Crumpton. No, Skoda, 29. Number 29. 13 yards. Crumpton's 49. Skoda on the flank, 29. Three first oh, downs. Down. Three first downs in a row. He's moving the ball club. Well, I tell you, it's important they respond here with something. But otherwise, this Navy team is beginning to show enough faculty to lay it on them. Ball is at the Navy 40. First down. Pruitt and Fonestock are the wide.
Mike Peoples to the bottom of the picture. Blitz. Got away from it so far. Nope. Didn't get away from the last one, though. The rover, Chris Boplett, Jr. out of San Diego. Came in and got it. Well, maybe decided to quit sitting back and playing soft in the standard defense and said, let's get after him. He's hurting us a little bit. Went the man to man, put a blitz on from the corner, what we call a corner blitz, and they got to him. Ball is backed up to. <laughs> sitting out there in that shield. I can't see it. Well, it's on the 49-yard line of, of Army. Got to go to the 30. So they need 21 yards for the first down. On second down. There's your option. Beach is going to throw the option. It's intercepted. Nope, drop. And it might be an interception fumble. Let's wait and see. So now they're ruling it. Yep. Fred Reitzel. 206-pound junior out of Warner, New Jersey. Came up with it, fumbled it, recovered it, and Navy has the ball back. Now they're trying that halfback option pass, and they had it well covered. Timeout on the field with six minutes and 32 seconds. To play in quarter number three, and Navy's leading the ball game 24-7. The football first down at their 47-yard line. Army had the ball for eight plays before the interception. That was their longest period of possession. The longest, the greatest number of successive plays they've been ever run out of the game. All right, here's Navy with Myers and Flewinski back to Powers. And Myers. And he's to the 49 for a couple of yards. Maybe the 50. Nope, 49. down at eight for the middies. Blitzen. Pass incomplete. Penalty flag on the field. Pass intended for Dave Dent. Jacksonville, Florida. Looks like a hold call against Navy. Big George Mays out there said, you bet it was holding. They were holding me. <laughs> Well, they call it clip. They call it clip. They call it a clip. He, he signaled clip. Let's see what he's got on Mays there. It's number 55 there. He's trying to shed center Richard Bott. Finally pushes him away. Or does he? No. No, there was <laughs> two points for the fall. That wasn't a clip, I'll say that. <laughs> oh, the clip happened somewhere else. That's right. That's Navy's second penalty, a total of 20 yards and flags now. You see the substantial advantage in the average yards per play there in behalf of Navy. The ball has moved back just short of the 30. They've got to go down near the Army 43 to get their first down. Oh, that's a bunch of yards. 26 of them. Papa John to the right side. Meyer. He rambles right along, doesn't he? Say one thing, he reads and uses his blockers well. He doesn't waste himself. He uses everybody that's in front of him, and he makes the one-on-one -on -one tackler pay the price for tackling him if he gets a hold of him. He gained eight. He's carried 31 times now for 189 yards. The ball is at the 39 of Navy. And it is third and long. They need 18 yards. Powers looking deep, goes to the sidelines instead, and it's incomplete. Put the ball in there for Callahan, and there was very good coverage by Bruce Elliott out of Hampton, Virginia. Well, I think uh, Powers uh, didn't use the best judgment there. He was well covered. 
He had a man going deep. Yes, in the inside. Yep. He elected to throw the ball to the wrong man. This will be the second punt for Navy. The first one by Lex Lauletta out of Westchester, PA, was good from 40. That's John Hellingstad out of Madison, Wisconsin, going deep. Nine coming. Heats on, gets it out. Oh, up, ball's oh. loose. Alex Dad foolishly tried to field it with white shirts all around him. And whoever it was back there with him might have been Gerald Walker. I think dove in there and got the ball. That's a 27 yard punt. Army has it. See who that is getting up in the bottom of the stack. Now that was not good judgment fielding the ball. He should have signaled for a catch. Never did. Find out who it was though. Dan Enright might have been. No, he could very well have lost that one. Yep. Twenty-four to seven. Navy gives Army the ball, and the cadets go from their 33 first down. Outside on the option. Gain up to about the 35. Well, they made some adjustments over in the sideline on the option play. The defensive coaches of Navy because they had everybody there to stop the pitch. Thompson brought down by Boblett on the carry. Thompson <laughs> just off the field now. They put in an extra wide receiver. Leaving Beach is the lone remaining back. On second down and eight. Decker, the quarterback. Dancing around on the sideline. Tangled up with one of the officials. <laughs> Number 54, Terry Huxel, just unloaded on him. <laughs> the official was keeping him from moving. And Huxel just leveled him. Let's see if we get a shot. There's Huxel, 54. He'll come into the picture here in a minute. There's the official putting on a screen block, and there's Huxel. <laughs> Cleans him up. Got to get out of the way, official. Third down and nine. Decker swings it out. Oh, got it. Nice little move there, and he's close to a first down. Oh, there's a flag down. Army's flagged on the play. Well, they showed screen the whole way, but made it work for about nine yards. But now there's the bad news. Holding. Some good blocking out in front. They knocked down the Navy people out here on the right side. But there's a 15-yarder put on them. That's a, that's a big turnaround, too. They were out to the 40, almost 44-yard line. Yep. On Monday night, the Oakland Raiders go into the Superdome against the New Orleans Saints. Now, Oakland's trying to stay in the hunt of things out in the AFC Western Division, but New Orleans has been the big surprise in the NFC West. Saints are sitting on top of that division, and Archie Manning and company will be roping and snaring at home against the Oakland Raiders. The Raiders jumped on Denver the other day, though, so they could be spoilers. Here's Beachy. And Beachy, the fullback. From the 20-yard line, just inside the 20, runs it up across the 30. But it's going to bring up a fourth down for Army, and they will have to punt. Beachy gained 11. He's got 50 yards on 10 carries. Okay. That was a good call to draw play back there. He had long yardage and no sense in throwing the ball away. Especially when you got a 5-foot, 8-inch quarterback. <laughs> he has trouble seeing. Charlie Adams. Beautiful kick. Hangs it high. John Ross waves fair catch. Accepts it back at the 30-yard line. 31-yard line. 39-yard hanging punt. 2.59 to go third quarter. And we've got a time. Want to know four ways to help get... It is Navy's football. As you see, the Black Knight. 
Navy owning the ball and the lead. 24 to 7. First down at their 31. And it's Lewinsky and Myers still in there at the setback position. Powers remains a quarterback and Lewinsky gets the carry and gets a yard or so. Look out. Somebody pull the cotton pin out of that bunch and they'll all come tumbling down. I remember we were here, what, three or four years ago and one of the first lady cheerleaders broke her ankle. Oh, that's right. She got a lot of attention that night, too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she sure did. Second down and about eight from near the 33. Blitz. Outside to Meyer. Oh, look at this. Oh, he's got quick acceleration. Myers carried. That's what happens. 41. You start playing, doing a lot of blitzing, and you get outside, and they wall you off, and you're playing man-to-man. -man. They're driving you off. Here it is. It's just a pitch sweep. You can see the attempting the blitz by the linebackers. They're picked off. Myers picks the daylight here. There's only one man here to save it. As 51 comes across there and makes the play. Dan Kessler from Greensburg, Pennsylvania, made the defensive play. The ball is at the 40, third down and one. And Ed Myers now with 197 yards, closing down on 200 time, charge to Navy. With 143 to go in the third quarter. And how many yards away from 277? He's still within, yeah, he's still within an opportunity. He's got a quarter over quarter to play. While we've got the timeout, let's run through the bowls. Temple in California play in the Garden State Bowl next, well, the 15th, in a couple of weeks. Independence Bowl, same day. McNeese State going against Syracuse. That's down in uh, Lafayette, Louisiana. Holiday Bowl in San Diego. BYU undefeated against Indiana. Liberty Bowl on the 22nd, which we'll have for you. Tulane against Penn State, eight, uh, seven and four now. They lost today to uh, Pittsburgh. The Sun Bowl, pretty good ball game there. Washington nine and two against Texas nine and two. Texas losing today. The Tangerine Bowl, Wake Forest and LSU. The Fiesta Bowl, Pittsburgh and Arizona. Pittsburgh a winner today to make it ten and one. Gator Bowl, the 28th, which we'll have for you. Michigan and North Carolina. Hall of Fame has South Carolina, Missouri. Peach Bowl has Clemson, Baylor. Lou Bonnet has Tennessee. And uh, Sugar Bowl, that matchup just confirmed today. Alabama, Arkansas, and the Cotton Bowl will be uh, Nebraska and Houston. Myers again with the carry. And Myers on third and one gets the first down for the Navy. So he has now gone past 200 yards. 202, and he did it on 33 carries. He's up to 33 already. <laughs> Say he may hit that 277. <laughs> I don't know if George is going to let him play that long. Well, he's, he's going to keep him in there until he scores another one, I think. The most attempts now something he might handle tonight. Joe Gattuso had that mark, has that mark of 39 against Georgia Tech in 1977. Kluwinski carried. Big fullback Kluwinski. Once again, the ball is resting in Army territory. The Cadet 49, where it'll be second down and four. Clock running at a minute to go in the third quarter. Navy has dominated the ball game. Power pulls it down. He's going to run and a good defensive play. Number 94, Larry Crumbore, the senior, reached in and got him by the foot. Had a great defensive play. Otherwise, Powers is going to turn that corner for big yardage. And he re just, with his left arm, reached out there and just tripped him up. Great play. That looked very much like the play that Schleister runs at Ohio State. That's what it was, just a predetermined run. He sprints away from the center and looks like he wants to pass, but he actually is pre-called a run. Everybody was blocked but Crumbore. Ball at midfield. There's Bennett warming up. We may see him on the next possession for Army as Powers puts it in the air, and it is incomplete. The pass was intended for Mitchell. Mitchell again almost fell down as he turned back to look for the ball. And that incomplete forward pass stops the clock with one second remaining in the third quarter. And there's Gerald Bennett. You can see his passing number, so we can look for Army to be putting the ball up. If he goes in. 
got a pretty good arm, but the only thing that uh, Lou Saban said is he's been a little bit erratic. Of course, he's got seven interceptions in there in the uh, 86 attempts. But the only way they can get back out of this game is not possession football, and that's by running it. I mean passing it, I'm sorry. Hallingstad, the deep man for Army. Well, let us punt is up, and it's a beauty. Forcing a fair catch call back at the seven yard line. Third quarter is over. The Army Navy game continues after this message from one of our sponsors and station identification. Very fashionable. Although it's been a very comfortable day in Philadelphia, we started it was 42 and it's still quite comfortable. Clear and dry. Big old yellow moon hanging up there. First down for Army deep in their own territory. They start from the seven. And it's no place to get really fancy. We were speculating that Gerald Bennett might be sent in, the throwing quarterback for Army, but he is not. Decker is still in there. There's the moon. Doesn't look so yellow anymore now that it's up over the horizon where you can get some clear air. <laughs> there are the numbers after three quarters. Well, you can see the dominance of Navy here. 19 first downs to five. Rushing yardage, 245 to 84. 330 to 99. It's been a tough night for the Black Knights. Second down, Decker keeps it, dives into the stack, and maybe wiggles for a yard. Just starting the fourth quarter of play. A couple of new players going into the ball game. Bruin, a little guy, they've only thrown to him one time tonight. And he may be the fastest man on the field for Army at the moment. But the one time they uh, tried to throw it to him, the pass was intercepted. And if Navy wins tonight, they'll be all even after 80 games. It's been a long time waiting to get even. 56 years. Third down and seven. And the handoff goes inside and good for the first down as Bobby Vici from Frankfurt, New Jersey, runs it up the middle. They ran that very well. A little draw play comes back with 32. Vici takes the ball, weaves around in here, shakes a tackler. A nice job of running that ball. Got him out of trouble, too. And he now totals 67 yards on the night. The football is resting out near the 27. And Gerald Bennett is now in the ball game. They got better field position. And in he goes. Thrown 86 times, been intercepted seven times. Rolls it out. Well, how do you do? Everybody's talking about him throwing it. He just takes the snap and looks like a tailback. Got outside. No one contained him. He really had a pass called on, but there was no one there, so he just elected to run the ball. Pick what would happen there right now if somebody suddenly showed up for a football game with a single wing? <laughs> Nobody'd know how to defense it, I guess, until they'd played it and looked at the film. <laughs> <laughs> so what's going on here? He used to be a high school coach down in West Georgia, he used the Notre Dame box for years. Nobody knew how to defense it. There's a blitz. And it throws it away and completes it. How about that? He threw it, falling down, and hit his man. Tom Falk was the man that got the quarterback, but Bennett was able to deliver it. Yeah, they had a lot of heat on him, and he reacted well. There's number 55, Paul, coming blitzing with his end. He escapes the blocker right here, puts him behind him, grabs him. This is a great throw. Look at that. Yeah, he really, really had no leverage. Third down, three. Come to 34, they send it up the middle, and it doesn't work. Well, they were looking for the surprise, and it wasn't there. 12 minutes to play in the game. Bennett comes off the field. The kicking team goes on. Fourth down and three. Hey, outside of those two kicks that uh, Charlie Adams kind of shanked a little bit, he has punted very well since that time. He's gotten off some good punts. This is the eighth kick of the night. He's hit seven times, seven of them, for 36 and a half, roughly. Forcing a fair catch. Back around the 33 yard line. John Ross made the call. Again, to bring you up to date on what happened today, Alabama beat Auburn 25 18, and it wasn't easy, I'll tell you that. They had to do it late in the game. But Alabama goes into the Sugar Bowl against Arkansas. Auburn's on probation, they won't go anywhere. Texas A&M beat Texas 13 to 7. That puts Texas in the Sun Bowl against Washington. The Houston Cougars in the Cotton Bowl against Nebraska, sending Arkansas to New Orleans and the Sugar Bowl. And it's first down for Navy. 
let's say the 33 yard line and Myers is already over 200 yards and he's got four more now, talking about that Texas game, I don't believe anybody during the course of the year scored 18 points on Tech, uh, uh, Alabama is what I meant. Yeah. Against Bryant's defense, they have played terrific this year. Well, there was a comment made, uh, and probably it might have been true up until today. I'm going to tell you what it was in a minute. Give, uh, give Myers five on that last carry and make it second down and five. He's got it again. He's outside. <laughs> we're going to get that 277. Maybe. Yeah, he's <laughs> to watch, isn't he? He's also going to get Joe Gattuso's uh, 39 carry record, too. He's carried 35 times now. The same play, the pick sweep to the outside. There's Larry Klawinski in front there, blocking. He cuts right in behind it. He re really uses his blockers well. <laughs> Mike Sherlock would have been the tailback, but he's had hamstring trouble for the latter half of the season. Missed about four ball games. That gave Ed Myers his chance. He's cashing it in. First down, Navy. Ball at the Army 42. Klawinski runs for five or six. What I was going to say, I heard some <laughs> one of the veteran media people down in the Southeast say late in the season that probably the best football game in the Southeastern Conference might have been Alabama's offense against Alabama's defense. <laughs> but I don't think that's the case anymore after the oh. scuffle that Auburn put on them today. Oh, that's right. You can't uh, discount that Southern Cal offense either. Second down and five. On, Myers. He's got his first down. Myers, Cal, he's over 230 now. He'll be at 231 on the... Uh, 36 carries, four more, and he will have that record. Well, the dominance of the offensive line of this Navy team, of course, is very evident by the total yardage that they have amassed. And we see we've got up just a little under 10 minutes still to go in this third period. And they have generated, along with Myers, totally 280 yards, I believe it is, on the ground. See there, those numbers tell you the size of the Navy offensive front. Third down, he did not get the first down. Very short. Myers hits it in there, and he has it now as he goes inside the 30 to about the 28. You were mentioning USC a moment ago. You know, last year when Southern California was in against Michigan in the Rose Bowl, and Alabama played the Penn State in the Sugar Bowl, Alabama winning got the Associated Press number one vote, while UPI, the coaches' poll, gave it to USC. Well, this year, Southern California takes on Ohio State. The Trojans 10-0-1 and Ohio State 11-0. Alabama's 11-0 and, and Arkansas is 10-1. So we're probably going to have a very close vote again. You've got a Florida State going into a, a bowl game undefeated as well. Powers wants to throw, and he does for the corner. Callahan. A little bumping down there, but I thought Callahan might have made the catch. He was matched up against Bruce Elliott. Yeah, he, um, the, the pass was well led. Here comes Callahan right straight up the field, makes a little turn out, almost slips and falls, then an out and up. Let's see if there's any contact here. It looked like it from our press box. Right there. Well, it's not an intentional thing. Oh, yeah, he could have had that ball. Powers threw that very well. That's very easy to say up here. That's what I said. I would have had it. <laughs> <laughs> Second down and 10 from the, uh, the 29 yard line. Myers. A couple. I suppose Oklahoma, you know, if Oklahoma should go into the Orange Bowl and whip Florida State, then Oklahoma's going to be right there arguing a little bit about their claim. Well, they have a loss on their. Uh, yeah, they do. Yeah, Joel, of course, you've they got to beat Nebraska. The only thing that uh, you've got two undefeateds going, uh, but oh, of course, Southern Cal has a tie. Let's go defense! Ohio I'll tell you one thing, undefeated. though. We're a cinch to have one team this year go undefeated. Yeah. There's Lou Saban. He's coached a lot of football teams, both pro and college. From the 27th, third down and about eight. Myers, this time Army gets it. Good, solid tackle right in the middle of the line at the 26-yard line. Looked like George Mays had to be the man, and he is. 
Uh, Jerry Klein says. Getting back to that balloting again, it's going to be something depending on what happens in all these games. Who wins and how convincingly they win, how good they look in the process of defeating their opponent. So even the margin of score may make a difference. Right. Ed Myers now has equal Joe Gattuso's most attempts by rushing of 39. He's also closing down on Joe's mark of 250. Total yards. Whistle will stop him on fourth down. Too much time. That'll back him up five. Myers now with 238 in the game. Next Saturday on ABC's Wide World of Sports, World Cup Boxing, United States squad against the Soviet Union. And then the first time ever in the United States, the World Gymnastics Championship. Nadia Komenich. Kurt Thomas, Soviet Union will bring over Nikolai Andrianov and Nelly Kim, among many others. Fourth down, Powers gives the ball to Myers. And Myers with a great move up the middle is gone down to the corner. Touchdown! <laughs> what a play! The cannon moves and uh, the mid is sink. It's good. 40 carries, 269 yards for Ed Myers. That's a new record. Most attempts in the ball game, and he is now only eight yards away from the all-time rushing yardage record for Navy. Like it or not. There are the numbers on young Mr. Ed Myers, who is having a whale of a night. He's only eight yards away or nine yards away from beating that record. Total yards by rushing. It was said way back in 1935. The kick skitters along the ground and it's picked up short. And the cadets of Army will have pretty good field position as the return comes back to about the 33-yard line. Kevin Cullender, number 38. The man who brought it back. The score is 31 to 7. And let's go back and look at the touchdown run by Ed Myers, his third of the night. Again, it is the fake. And then the handback, he cuts it to the daylight. There's a big hole here. Dent comes downfield here and makes a big block for it, too. Number 86, right there. 61, John Taylor is out there in front. Now he cuts here. You see the balance that he had there. He kept his feet. And the one thing about this field, it has really held up well tonight. Yes, it has. First down for Army at the 33, and Bennett's the quarterback. Oh, can't throw it. Got his arm forward, though. It should be an incomplete forward pass, but the referee, Bertha, says no. You did not get the ball past the point of your shoulder. The ball was a fumble, but it was recovered by Army. John Merrill came in. I, I thought he was an incomplete pass. Now, you just look at it. Let's take a look and see. Back. Here comes the heat. Well, his arm was going forward that time. I thought his arm was going forward that time just as he was hit. Reminds me of another call in which it precipitated an awful lot of belly aching. <laughs> 20-yard <laughs> line, second down. They need 23 yards. And it's going to run it. It dropped off all the linebackers, peel back into the short zone, and he gets up across the 30. Showed pretty good quickness that time. I tell you, I think that uh, it's going to take some time for the for Lou Saban and his staff to put together a football team that is, a, is dominant in some of the other earlier Earl Blake teams, but I think it can be done. I think Navy is on the verge. Had they not had the uh, enormous number of injury, injuries as well, uh, they could have been with a 9-2 and two season very easily this year. Third down and 12. the blitz well the pass is complete for the sidelines to Larry Pruitt the freshman out of Berwick PA the little guy finally got one 
But he's short of the first down. And here comes the kick and team on. They've got five and a half minutes to play in the game. They're losing 31 to 7. It's fourth down and four. Why don't you see if you can take that uh, big old wooden goat home there and put that in the park in South Bend? <laughs> <laughs> that would be fun for the youngest out of here. <laughs> High hanger. Fair catch at the 35. There's the big old wooden goat. 5.23 to go in the game. 31 to 7. Maybe Legion. Ball at just outside the 35. Call it the 36. 5.23 to go in the game. Myers is still in the lineup. Standing behind Flowinski. Powers the quarterback. Myers has got it. He's already got a new record for the number of carries. That's number 41 in the game. And he picked up what appears to be about five yards there. He now has 274 yards. Three more. He ties the all-time rushing record for a single game at the Naval Academy. He is also closing in on the best single game rushing mark of the season of 1979. That was 282 by Billy Sims. Well, this young man is really making himself some news tonight. He's oh. got it again, and the Army's looking for him. Well, he gets something out of the play of a couple of yards before they put him down. He ran right into Frank McAllister that time. McAllister was pulling and uh, just ran right into him, and he still picked up yardage. His own offensive guard. He now has 274. That's official. He needs four more. Come with a pitch sweep. There he goes. There he goes. I don't know if he got it or not. He's, He's close to down. his first down up across the 45, and that should be a new record. 43 carries, 279 yards. Both those numbers are new records for a running back at maybe. I think they know it over there, too. I think. Yep. Yeah, look at the kids come over there. They... Well, I imagine somebody uh, had the presence to go over and tell George Welch, the youngster was close to the record, and after the night he's having, he might as well go ahead and get it. They bring the change out to check. I don't think they need it. No. Oh, that's close now. <laughs> Look at the calipers. <laughs> I haven't seen that done before. <laughs> it is a first down. Way to go, Bob. All right. <laughs> oh, that's it. Huh? All right, that's Myers, you can get up and come back in here. Now he gets four more yards. He sets a new game high for the year. <laughs> Might as well get them all. He's going to sit on the sideline. Chris Klein and Dwayne Flowers are in there now on first down from the 46, and it's Flowers. He's the young man that had the ball get away from him on the fumble that set up Army's only touchdown of the night. Well, he's carried the ball 70 times, 75 times this year for the Navy team. Tom Tarquino is in at quarterback now. He is a freshman from Beaver, Pennsylvania. Those are the numbers on Ed Myers. Rushes a new record. Total yards a new record. And he's one touchdown short of tying the game record for touchdown. Flowers again. And Flowers bowls his way across midfield. Block running at 310 to play in the ball game. Oh, is that a play? Yep. Personal foul, I think. Ed Myers. Been a little frustration on both sides there. At least on the target side, but the penalties will offset. Pointed both directions. Ball is just over midfield. Third down at about five.
Aquino under some trouble, and down he goes back on the 40-yard line. Coming in to make the play is Lloyd Hollister inside linebacker number 61 for Army. I'd like to take a moment to congratulate Rear Admiral William P. Lawrence, superintendent of the United States Naval Academy. He is the winner of the 1979 gold medal given by the National Football Foundation and Hall of Fame. Bill Lawrence will be going up next week to accept it. He's a fine man. I'm happy for him. He joins a lot of distinguished men. He certainly does. Here's the punt by Navy. And the kick is away. Pretty good kick. Allingstad takes it, and he is decked right in his tracks. Back to the 26-yard line. And a big night for Ed Myers. And there's Bill Lawrence. Walking over to congratulate Ed Myers on a big night. I just discovered oil. I Valuable players in the ball game for Army. Middle guard George Mays. And for Navy, that's pretty obvious. Ed Meyer. Gerald Bennett looking to throw it. Couldn't find anybody. Turned it upfield, and he ran for a couple of yards. Now, we're running out of time, running late. Won't have time for a scoreboard show. We'll bring you up to date today. Alabama goes to the Sugar Bowl to play Arkansas after beating Auburn 25-18 in a tough ball game in Birmingham. Texas A&M defeated Texas 13-7, sending Texas to the Sun Bowl and the Houston Cougars going to the Cotton Bowl to represent the Southwest Conference because the Houston Cougars today clobbered Rice. It is second down and nine for Army as Bennett sets up the throw. Can't find anybody. And he runs it out to the 32-33 yard line before he is brought down. 63-0, the Houston Cougars today over the Rice Owls to go to the Cotton Bowl. Pittsburgh going to the Fiesta Bowl to play Arizona, apparently. Defeated Penn State. Penn State going to the Liberty Bowl to play Tulane. Boston College and Holy Cross. The Eagles won it 13 to 10. Third down and four from Army with a minute and five to play in the game. The Navy leading 31 to 7. Set up a screen. For some yardage up across the 35 to the 36, a yard short is Rob Heather, a sophomore out of Springfield, Virginia, carried the ball. Tennessee heading off to the Blue Bonnet Bowl to play Purdue one today over Mandy. Ithaca stayed in the playoffs, beating Wittenberg 14 to 10. That's the final score today. And Mississippi College losing to Delaware. Delaware will go into the Division II finals now against Youngstown State. And they bring the change in for the measurement. Youngstown State today beat Alabama A&M 52 to nothing. Give me a pair of high-scoring machines get together next week in that ball game between Delaware and Youngstown. That'll be the semifinal. So they're just short of the first down. Eddie Myers, you're looking at. Edward Alexander Myers. From Pemberton, New Jersey. Pemberton High School. He lettered four in football, four in wrestling, three in track. Had a little bit of varsity experience a year ago. Used mostly at fullback this spring. Tried some at tailback. When Mike Sherlock got hurt, it opened the door for Eddie Myers to step in there and play. And tonight he put his name in the Navy record book. 43 rushes. That's a new record. Total yardage, a new record for a single game. And he's just three yards short of Billy Sims' game high record of 282, Oklahoma against Missouri. And penalty flags all over the place as the play breaks on fourth down with Army going for the first down, trying to keep it. 30 seconds to play in a ball game. This 80th meeting between Army and Navy. The penalty is against Army for illegal procedure. And after they have finished this 80th game, this series will be all even. Well, this is also our last regular season telecast. We have three bowl games coming, four actually, including the hula coming up for you. But we hope you've enjoyed uh, college football on ABC in 1979, and we'll be happy to be back with you in 1980. A half a minute to play. Time is called. comes up on fourth down and about six yards to go and the cadets will kick it away. Charlie Adams will hit it and then Navy will just have to run out the clock. 
to make this long time series all even. Ball takes an army roll and it's going to roll dead down around the 30 yard line. And while they're bringing the new teams on the field with 21 seconds to play, I'd like to mention some of these gentlemen. Executive producer of NCAA football is Ruin Arledge. Coverage of the Army Navy game produced by Chuck Howard, who's been with us all season long. Directed by Andy Sedaris, who's been with us for so many good years. Our technical director, John Allen. Our associate director, Ben Harvey. Our technical manager, Bob Armbruster. Our unit manager, Steve Israel. The assistant producer, Peter Engelhart. Media directors, Don Bernstein. Our production assistants, Rick Bernstein, Sal Johnson, and Garland Pete. Our researcher, Jerry Klein. And our statistician, Mike Swanson. I think that's most of everybody and our camera guys who always do a great job for us. Ten seconds to go in the ball game. Now less than that. And the 1979 regular football season is just about done. People coming down out of the stands. A crowd of 77,052. And the 80th Army-Navy game is history. The goalposts are coming down. Ed Meyer had a marvelous night. He set new Navy records in total carries for one ball game and in total yardage gained rushing in a ball game. So it's a big night for the midshipmen of Navy as they beat Army 31 to 7 at John F. Kennedy Stadium in Philadelphia. done in the Army Navy encounter for 1979 now the parties can begin travel arrangements made through and promotional fee paid by United Airlines more people fly United to Hawaii than any other airline this has been a presentation of the leader ABC Sports bringing you exclusive coverage when the world comes to America this February for the 1980 Winter Olympics once again Ed Myers the star as Navy beats Army 31 to 7